if we want to figure out exactly how the cult of Oberwork is wrong, we clearly can't trust the cult members themselves because they say things like this. You can forget lunch breaks. You can't make money for a company while you're eating lunch. If you don't put in the hours, someone just as smart and clever as you will. Fact of life, the strong survive. If you ignore this, you might just end up as roadkill, lying dead by the side of the corporate highway as others drive right past you. This is from a horrible book called You Can't Win a Fight with Your Boss by Tom Marker. The title alone should tell you just how bad that book is. We also shouldn't just trust our own gut feeling. I think there's only one way to go here. In the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. And we're in luck, because there is a tremendous amount of science we can look at on the effects of overwork. This sums it up pretty well. Considerable evidence shows that overwork hurts us and the companies we work for. I know what you're thinking. What kind of goddamn radical postmodern neo-Marxist academics came up with this? And I can tell you, it was the goddamn radical postmodern neo-Marxist academics over at Harvard Business Review. That's right. One of the world's leading management magazines from one of the world's leading business schools concluded that overwork sucks. Let's count the ways in which it sucks, starting with the big one, profits. And by the way, I'll be giving citations to the research papers I use every step of the way so you know that all of this is proven. You can also find all of these references in the video description. So, do companies where employees routinely overwork make more money? That'd be a big fat nope. Why not? It, it, it's really not a, it's not a big mystery. We get tired. And as people get tired, they lose cognitive capacity, which means that overworked people are less productive, less creative, make more mistakes, have more accidents in the workplace, make worse decisions, are less likely to help each other, and are dumber. Yes, that last one is true. Overwork makes you dumber. A study of British government workers found that those who worked 55 hours a week scored lower on various cognitive tests than their co-workers who worked 40 hours a week. Before we go on, we should pause to make clear the distinction between productivity and output. Output is how much work a given person or team or company produces. A certain number of widgets produced in a factory or lines of code written in a tech company, for instance. Productivity is simply output per time unit. So how much gets produced per hour, day, week, or whatever. And, and many people accept that a person who works 80 hours a week will probably be less productive than one working 40. They intuitively get that the last 40 hours are probably going to be less effective than the first 40. But what most people don't know is that productivity actually drops so much for people working more than about 50 hours a week for all of the reasons we just saw, that their total output is lower, not just their productivity. And this is true for both factory workers and knowledge workers. It's not just a matter of diminishing returns on the extra hours. There's a negative return on those hours. And the company is overall less profitable. And this is not news. During World War I, the British Army needed Munitions, munitions, and more munitions. They desperately wanted to maximize the output of their munitions factories. And at first, they tried to make workers work more, up to 90 or even 100 hours a week. But when that mysteriously didn't work, they started collecting data, connecting working hours to output, and found something very curious. This graph shows actual output, so not productivity, versus hours worked for two groups of women workers doing two different kinds of tasks. As you can see, beyond a certain number of hours, in, in this case 51 a week, working more hours did not increase output. Every hour worked after that was essentially wasted. We have known this 
since 1917. This effect has been found again and again in many different studies from both factory settings and office settings. One team of game developers were trying to finish a game on a deadline, so they moved from 40-hour work weeks to 60, 10 hours a day, 6 days a week. They found that they did indeed get more work done for the first 3 weeks, but after 4 weeks total output fell. Their productivity had fallen so much that they were now working more while accomplishing less. And even though overworking your employees doesn't increase output, it can actually increase costs because maybe more employees get sick or quit the workplace and have to be replaced, which is costly. So overwork is no bueno for the workplace, but it's also very bad for people. Studies show that permanent overwork is connected with a long list of mental and physical health problems, including all of these. For instance, people who work more than 55 hours a week have a 33% increased risk of getting a stroke. I think the impaired sleep thing is kind of interesting because research also shows that bosses who haven't slept well are more likely to abuse their staff. Remember Marissa Meyer bragging about getting by on five hours of sleep? You gotta wonder how her employees were getting by. <laughs> also, studies show that 15% of Americans believe they can get by on less than six hours of sleep a night, but only one in 20 are correct. The rest are, we can only assume, sleepy assholes. Yet another problem is that while people can be pressured to be in the office for 12 hours a day, there's just no way they're working productively 12 hours a day. This leads to a ton of ass time, that is unproductive time, where your ass is in your office chair, but no real work is getting done until the light finally turns off in your boss's office and you can go home. This is deeply frustrating because not only is, is that time taken away from the rest of your life, that time is wasted and you know it's wasted and nobody likes to waste time. Another problem with overwork is that it has an inherent gender bias. It forces people to choose between work and family and even if the company offers any kind of concessions to personal life like parental leave or you know, letting you leave early to pick up your kids, those who take those concessions are seen as uncommitted and their careers are derailed. And that ends up hurting women's careers much more often than men's. More broadly, the cult of overwork exploits vulnerable groups. Undocumented immigrants may be pressured into taking unpaid overwork under the threat that if they don't, they'll be reported to immigration authorities and possibly deported. Unskilled workers in areas with high unemployment may be pressured into long working hours under the threat of being fired. And an older employees who often find it harder to find a new job because of ageism can be pressured into overwork for the same reasons. And the final problem I'll mention with the cult of overwork is that it's meaningless and unjust because it rewards those who work a lot instead of doing the obviously fair thing and reward those who work well, those who do a good job. How unfair is it? <laughs> One study found that managers couldn't actually tell the difference between those of their employees who did work 80 hours a week and those who just pretended to. Both of those groups were rewarded, but you know what managers could do? What they could do was identify and punish employees who were open about working less. Even though there was no evidence that those employees accomplished less or any sign that the overworking employees accomplished more. Imagine what it must feel like to work 40 hours a week and do great work, but get passed over for promotions again and again in favor of coworkers whose output is no better than yours, but who work 80 hours a week. Or even worse, seeing the rewards go to coworkers you know are only pretending to work that much. Oh, and going back to the gender bias, this effect hurts women more. The same Harvard study found that women who didn't buy into the cult of overwork were more likely to openly choose to work less and consequently were marginalized within the firm. Men who didn't want to work 80 hours a week were more likely to find ways to cheat and make it look like they did and therefore were not 
punished. I don't know about you, but I have a thing about unfairness. I, I can't stand it. And this is just plain wrong. So these are some of the main reasons why the cult of overwork sucks. It doesn't just suck. It's also dumb, idiotic, stupid, moronic, and ridiculous. But hold on a minute. Hold on. If all of these successful people that CNN celebrated work long hours, doesn't that mean that long hours make you successful? No, it actually doesn't. Let's look at why. I gotta say, when I started writing this video, I honestly had no idea that it would end up being nearly 90 minutes. So instead of making it one long piece, I've split it into seven shorter chunks. You can find the link to the other videos in the video description or right up here. I hope you find them entertaining and useful. If so, it would be awesome if you click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please write a comment. I'd love to know what you think about the cult of overwork.